All right, so welcome to Night Hacking at the J Focus Conference. I'm joined with Matthias Gruter. Yes. Did, did I get that close? Good enough. <laughs> Good enough. Um, and you're a local here in yes, Sweden? In Sweden. I'm based in Stockholm. Very good. Um, and you guys use lots of Docker at your company, Transmode, right? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> We're about to use it in production right now. We just use it internally. OK, that makes sense. And the reason we don't use it in production yet is we don't have a production system yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good reason not to it put is. things in production. Yeah. Um, so why did you choose to use Docker for your, for your Java development? Well, I think Docker's really, uh, it's really a, it gets you one step closer to um, building it once and using it everywhere and running it everywhere. It's, uh, it simplifies my life as a developer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I have a little bit, I really like the ops side, so I'm equally engaged in Docker from, as in, from the ops perspective and the development perspective. And I think it's, Docker is a truly DevOps tool. Yeah, so does this, as a developer, like most of the people at the conference here are developers, does it let them get closer to the operations side where they know exactly what's going on with their end deployments um, to staging environments or production when they use a container like Docker? I think yes, because what they basically do is they encapsulate a whole bunch of m uh, many more dependencies that they have in their application inside a container. Mm -hmm. So they actually they don't have to care anymore that much what the operations guy is going to do with the containers. At the same time, they will be able to have a, a, a much easier um, discussion with, with, with operations guys because they talk on equal terms. Okay, and um, so you're talking at the conference here about Docker and the JVM. Yes. So why why is that a good match? Um, the JVM is already very good at encapsulating a whole bunch of things. You can basically just deliver your app and, and your libs in one directory and, and boot it. But uh, and Docker just helps you, gets you one step further into encapsulating into a true runnable deliverable that, that you can deploy anywhere, basically, in production, in testing, and in development. OK, so it pairs very well with the JVM, but you're getting an even larger enclosure of all the other aspects of your production deployment, or your eventual production <laughs> deployment. Exactly. It basically does what the JVM should have done a long time ago. Cool. And I mean, for your average Java development shop who's not using Docker, what mm -hmm. would you, how would you convince them that should, they should take a look at the technology? Well, first of all, they should come to the talk. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go start with the basics and get some introduction to Docker. And I think the best way, and most people do that, is they start using Docker for internal systems, maybe deploy doc maybe uh, deploy Jenkins or Defactory or something like that in, in a Docker container. Mm -hmm. So you start to get to feel how, it, how the feel of handling containers and, and deploying them. And once you're there, you, start, you can start encapsulating your application in, 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 in images, in Docker images. And you basically want to use them in the beginning in development and testing. And when you feel comfortable, you can start using them in production. OK. So maybe to start with your own operational tools, things you use for um developing and testing and um, you know, handling your artifact repositories and eventually move into the actual application that you're developing once you're comfortable with the new infrastructure. I think that's a, that's a good uh, strategy, yes. And, and the thing is, you don't have to do, go all in from the beginning. You can just gradually move in. and uh, Yeah, so you can basically mix match whatever tools you want to use and, and use Docker sometimes and not all the time. OK, and um, I think one of the things that um, a lot of people do with Docker is they'll deploy to um, different cloud infrastructure or different, um, it gives you more options for easily to deploying to a mm. wide variety of different types of services. Yes. So what's, what's your plans at Transmode when you eventually do get to production? How are you planning to actually um, deploy your product? Right now we're at a proof of concept phase. and uh, so. We're testing with Amazon Web Services, mm -hmm. and they just released a container service end of last year. I haven't tested it. We're just using bare VMs and install Docker in it. So we might go that route, or we maybe have a, our own private uh, infrastructure. We don't know yet. Okay. But that's the, that's the beauty of Docker. You don't really have to care about that. Yeah, so you can uh, defer the decision about your, your final deployments. Yeah. Um, and and you just have the containers set up so they're kind of self-contained, easy to work with. And we work with enterprise customers, and we're going to have them all over the world. So we might choose one, uh, uh, one supplier in one area of the world and another supplier here in Europe. So 
Doesn't gives you geographical distribution of your service as well then? Yeah. Potentially. Potentially, yes. Um, besides Amazon's service, are there any other cloud providers which give you know, good solutions for deploying Docker containers? Definitely. The, uh, Docker's quite young, but yet mo most major players already adopted it. So if you run with Rackspace, uh, Google Compute Engine, Amazon Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure actually also supports Docker natively. Um, and then you can, there's a whole bunch of other, like DigitalOcean is a very good way to start. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of plays out there you can choose from. OK. And from a, like a developer experience, if you're building an application on your you know, local machine and trying to iterate, how does it affect your um, development productivity to use a Docker instance versus just um, setting up the environment manually? Um, really, Docker helps you to, to create some kind of virtual environment stereotypes. stereotypes. Mm -hmm. So if you know virtual env in Python, it's basically that, just much more. And uh, what you do to define your environment, you, you write a so-called Docker file. It's just a text file with a bunch of instructions that instructs Docker how images and containers should be built one by one. So you basically just have one file describing your application and, and its environment. And whenever you, uh, you rebuild the application, you just rebuild the image as well in, in, in one step afterwards or the same step. Uh, what we did at Transmode, we, we developed a, a plugin for Gradle that we use as our build system. And the plugin does that for you. So you, whenever you rebuild, you also rebuild the image. Instead of an RPM or a char file, you now have yeah, the image. Yeah, so that's your end deployment target to generate the Docker um, container. And then you can just deploy it to your service of choice. Yes, yes exactly. All right, cool. Um, so thanks very much for the short interview, Mateus. You're welcome. Thank you. And um, up next is the JFocus night hacking party. So we're going to chat about 20 years of Java and show some cool memorabilia, um, both physical and in the form of code. So join us for that at 6.30. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen.